So I'm here with Rosanna Chavez, who is the retention counselor for CAMP, is that right? Yes. There are CAMP programs not only throughout California, but nationwide. Okay. Um, 17 total, um, one even in Puerto Rico. Wow. And California, there is a total of eight programs right now. Um, six at the CSU and three at a community college. For a uh, wide range of services, uh, first of all, we offer lots of uh, outreach services where our outreach counselor goes to different high schools all from all throughout California from the Oregon border down to um, nearly the Mexico border which is in Brawley, California and what we do is we outreach these students let them know about college that they have an option to come to the university and that they can choose a different path in their life if they like and um, once they're here what we do is we offer services um, from A to Z we offer academic um, advising services, different counseling services, whether that's um, career counseling, um, financial aid counseling, housing information, even personal counseling at times with some students um, as they're transitioning to the university. Now, according to the, um, this is the ASI budget summary mm -hmm. that was approved just a couple so weeks ago. Despite you guys having requested twenty thousand dollars, what was recommended was six thousand dollars, which is four thousand less. Right. So, do you know yet how that's going to affect the upcoming year as far as hiring student assistants or being able to offer those stipends? It'll definitely affect. Not sure how so much right now. It's probably going to affect the amount of students we're going to be able to have as part of the camp scholars program, just okay. because we might not be able to bring as many on board most likely it's going to affect how large their stipend is okay. for the academic year and it's probably also going to affect um, some of our higher student assistants whether they will be able to continue or not because of those funds. What are you most worried about I guess with this? Lots of funds. Yeah, lots of funds from the ASI level. Right. What's the number one thing that worries um, you? What really worries me would probably be well, what we've talked about so far is just the loss of student assistant positions, definitely, just because um, anyone can tell you on this campus that, you know, our students are at the heart of this campus, and without their help, you know, a lot of our programs really can't, can't be run. You know, we need our student assistants to assist us in our everyday jobs, yeah. so that's definitely going to be tough, so it's, it's a big worry, definitely, and also with the scholars program, um, I'm more worried because I feel like now other students who have this great potential, they might miss out on this great opportunity because of My name is um, Jessica Castellón. I am a double major in social work and ethnic studies, and I go to Sacramento State. I was born in San Jose, California, and I self-identify as Chicana. Education means to my family um, growth, learning, success. There's two things that have really rooted me at Sacramento State. Um, and one is the Ethnic Studies Department. I feel like a lot of support coming from faculty members and the department itself. And another one is the Multicultural Center that's gotten me also to find my place at Sacramento State and to truly find like the power within me to speak my voice, tell my truth, tell my story, and then also have it validated by others. walk into an organization like the Multicultural Center, um, you are walking into a community that is welcoming, accepting, um, and, and we really try to foster at the, uh, at the uh, Multicultural Center um, community and inclusiveness, so we're always trying to listen to others and grow from their experiences, validating their experiences. At the same time, um, be critical about things around us um, and how we are really influent, influencing others through our actions and words, and like even everyday practices. Mm -hmm. There's a few things that I think that um, actually, um, you know, funding um, organizations like the Multicultural Center 
because uh, it really is a service to the students. When there's a 30 or 40 percent retain retention rate, you really have to evaluate what the what the campus is really doing and how much we really are trying to have students stay. Because if sem um, if 60 or 70 percent of students are dropping out, um, you kind of have to reevaluate what are departments doing. Um, not only right, but also wrong, and how we can also improve those. And it's from personal experience, um, I can say that the Multicultural Center could do so much more if they were granted the funds. Um, number one is because a lot of underrepresented groups do not continue or are not really seen in higher education, so there has to be a place where these groups are being supported. And for someone to come up to me and say that I stayed at Sacramento State because I finally found a place where it was home to me, and um, I looked, I look at all the interns at the MCC as mentors, and you helped me stay. Like that was the biggest thing. Even if one person was stayed because of the multicultural center, that says something that that we're doing something right at the multicultural center. And I think that if we emphasize that and spread that around campus. Our retention rate would be really, really a lot higher. What often happens is you, a person drifts, and then you're like, "Where did that person go?" You know, and something happened. Something, something happened where that person didn't didn't get to talk to somebody and just to empower them to stay. And I feel like that's what the multicultural center is doing. Because a lot of people don't feel. Um, supported or they don't feel like they're getting the support either from big departments that have too many students in there and they can't get anyone on one time with their faculty members. Um, they don't feel so, so when that, all that's going on in your classroom and you go exit the classroom and then you walk out and then there's no place for you to go congregate and just talk to your friends about um, not only just um, simple issues of life but more complicated um, issues that you could be, you know really be dialoguing and having these critical conversations and um, really feel supported by others and the Multicultural Center offers that space, you're, you're going to be more likely to stay. After I graduate, I plan to get a MSW, so a Master's in Social Work, uh, but I also plan to get another either a PhD in Ethnic Studies or um, like a Community Social Justice Human Rights degree somewhere thrown in there. Not quite sure yet, uh, but um, some things that have influenced me is really um, my personal experiences as a woman of color in higher education, my family, and then also the multicultural center and my support system that I received there. Um, because um, really, my network was my family and my MCC family, and those are the people who really helped me find the confidence to even attempt to do these things. Because maybe necessarily not like four or five years ago, maybe I wouldn't have thought that I, like a PhD would ever be possible for a Latina woman in the U.S. And now it's totally possible. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. They'll climb the birds at the end.